now to discuss the embryo research issue is Paul Tully from the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children and Andrew Copson from the British Humanist Association. Gentlemen, thank you for coming. Welcome to you both. Andrew, okay. what's your view about this bill? Well, I think that the ethical focus of our discussions around it should be what's best for human welfare. And I think that the research this bill allows will help to cure, find cures for diseases like Parkinson's, like motor neuron disease, um, for strokes and so on, um, and that it will do so at a very little ethical cost um, in other ways. And I think it should be endorsed and approved and go forward. Paul, I suppose you'd actually accept the phrase human welfare. Um, human welfare, certainly, yes. We're concerned about the welfare of those who will be subject to the experiments that this bill seeks to sanction. We were told back in 1990 in the run-up to the current legislation that all manner of genetic diseases would be um, treated or cured, that we would be able to research into them by the use of human embryos. That's been going on since that um, act for, for 18 years with no cures, no treatments for genetic diseases, for those conditions that we were told would be helped. So if there had been cures found, you'd have been happier? Um, no, but I'd be... I feel that we hadn't been lied to. Well, you haven't we're been lied to, it's just the cures haven't yet emerged, <laughs> but they may yet. Well, well th they may yet, but there are more cures emerging through ethical techniques such as the use of adult stem cells, adult-derived stem cells. Um, 78 or so cures, uh, treatments so far, from the use of adult-derived stem cells, none from the use of, of uh, stem cells derived from human embryos. No treatments and cures from, from the use of human embryos. When are we going to see them? The ethical cost is huge. And Over uh, two million human embryos destroyed Andrew, uh, in the do you, process. Do you recognise that there, this, is a, this does present huge ethical dilemmas? I don't think it presents huge ethical dilemmas at all. I think, as I said, the ethical question that's engaged by this is how can we best cure the diseases of which people are suffering now today? Um, one of the ways that medical research has been, according to medical researchers, crippled is that they don't have sufficient number of cells to work on, for example. Um, and that's one, one of the reasons why they say uh, this bill is needed, and they have said that. Um, I think that when it comes to... Is it true? Disc well, I, they're there, the veracity of their claim has been assessed by, for example, the Science and Technology Committee uh, in Parliament who have given their endorsement to the bill, in fact encouraged um, uh, this sort of research to be allowed. I don't see but why... No cures I don't see... Well, no you, treatments. In part, this is to many embryos help... Many destroyed. But embryos, I think, are not what we're talking about either. When you say embryo, you instantly conjure up in the public's minds, and it's clear that this is, for example, what the Cardinal was doing when he made his statement. You instantly uh, conjure up in the public's minds a potential baby. Now, that's not really what we're discussing here. We're discussing should we allow scientists to mix um, human... Uh, DNA with animal cells, as you described uh, in, in your introduction, and produce cells that can then be grown for a few days, worked on, and then discarded when the research is done. These are not potential babies. They're mm. collections of cells that can be used in medical research to cure life-threatening diseases. Paul? But if, if you're talking about the mixing of human and animal mm -hmm. uh, cells, then, then you're talking about another issue as well, uh, which is, which is a, a, a horrid invasion of, of the dignity of human reproduction to, to mix cells in, in this way. Why um, is it a horrid invasion? Who is it harming, who is that, it? That, 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 that activity? It's, who it's, is har that harming? it's harming the nature of the human person. It's harming ourselves as, 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 as human beings. How can an endeavour that is if, focused on increasing human welfare if, if this harm human dignity? It's a wonderful expression of what human beings can do. We can do this to help cure because, ourselves and other people of these terrible because, diseases. Because, as we know, there are researchers who will want to use human subjects to conduct research into, in, into human beings, and, and we find it necessary. But that's not what's, what's being proposed. It well, it, it is being proposed, it's being done, it's being conducted, um, we're, and we're being told that, that these embryos which are, which are vital to research, they're so, so human, so key that they're vital to research, and yet they are not, not entitled to the respect for their human dignity, um, th that is the reason why, why we want them. D doesn't this all come down to the question of whether the ends justify the means? Well, that's one way of putting it, yes, you, you could say that. Uh, and and uh, th that's a, an idea which is universally rejected by ethicists because we say, well, no, you can't just, you can't just say, well, we're going to cure, can to cure cancer, for example, so we can destroy some cancer victims in the process. And that I think that's the, the ends, sort of the emotive comment. I think that's the sort of emotive comment that is extremely unhelpful in this debate. Again, I say we're not talking about destroying anyone. We're not talking about destroying any people. We're not talking about destroying any babies or even any potential babies. We're talking about allowing scientists to use a method where animal and human DNA is mixed a little to produce cells that then can be used for research. Those aren't potential people. They're not actual people Paul, either. Can, can I just put this to you? Um, we've heard about all the 200 charities today, charities that are caring about uh, disease and sickness 
all of them urging MPs to vote for this bill. Every single one, cancer relief, the Heart, British Heart Foundation, charities we all know and respect. Does that not wash with you? Well, you, ha you have to look at the politics of what's going on there. The charities are dominated by the Association of Medical Research Charities and by the genetic interest groups, which are political groups, which are, very, you know, which are dominated by those. No, they're not just there to cure, try to find treatments to cure people. The Association of Medical Research Charities isn't, no. The Association of Medical Research Charities is there to, to promote certain particular interests that those research charities have. Um, and, and medical research is, is a big business nowadays. Um, and, and there are very serious um, financial concerns around the current legislation uh, and around those organizations which, which are working in this field. Um, the, the, there are careers that, that, uh, to be made and lost in, in this sphere. There are Nobel Prizes to be won and so on. It's not, it's not simply a matter of... I, I think if we want to talk about special interests penetrating campaigning groups and forwarding their own agendas, then we should talk about the special interests that might lie behind the organisations that are opposing this proposal for medical research. I think it's very clear, for example, in some of the uh, criticisms and arguments that have come from religious sources, that in the case of the Cardinal, for example, he is seeking to impose one particular religious ethical view on everybody else. He's saying that because um, his religion finds something uh, distasteful in this sort of research, that therefore it shouldn't be done uh, to help other people full stop. I think that's just as bad. Gentlemen, we're going no, to have to leave it there. It's a broad Christian humanism. Well, we're going to have to leave it there. I don't sadly. see how a humanist it's, can it's, argue excuse against me, the rights of I'm in charge here. Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you, though. This is a great debate. The debate's going to go on and on and on. I'm grateful to you both coming in. Thank you. Andrew Copson from the British Humanist Association and uh, Paul Tully from the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children. Thanks both for children.